The purpose of this video is to walk you through the calculations associated with conducting a 2x2 Pearson chi-square analysis. And the example I'm going to use is the handedness and dyslexia data. On this slide is the Pearson chi-square formula in all its glory. It is, just as a recap, the difference between the observed frequency and the expected frequency squared divided by the expected frequency for that cell and then you sum across all of the cells within the contingency table analysis. So what does that look like in real terms? This is a table that represents the frequencies associated with the addedness and dyslexia data. There are basically four cells of key importance with respect to the presentation of the results associated with the 2x2. Two two. And what we have here are handedness, which is right and left. So you're either right-handed or you're left-handed, at least for this study. It can be more complicated than that. And then dyslexia is coded no, yes. So either you have dyslexia or you don't. Again, it could be more complicated than that. But for the purposes of this analysis, we have two dichotomous variables, handedness and dyslexia. Then we have right-handers over here, which were 223 who did not have dyslexia. And then we have five right-handers that did have dyslexia. Left-handers, 17 of them did not have dyslexia, and five did have dyslexia. So those are the observed frequencies associated with the 2x2 two two contingency table analysis. All of these analyses are contingency table analyses. Even the test of the difference between the correct identification of Pepsi versus Coke with my ex-girlfriend, that's also a contingency table analysis. Now the extra piece of information I have in here that you may not have come across before, or at least I haven't really talked about much in the textbook, are these values that are marginal cell totals, or marginal frequencies. And here we have 228 people who are right-handed in the whole sample. Doesn't matter whether you have dyslexia or you don't, there were 228 people who were right-handed. And then we have 22 people. So far fewer people were left-handed than right-handed. And we call these marginal cell frequencies. Now on the other side of the table, we also have marginal cell frequencies. This is the frequency of people who were not dyslexic. 240 did not have dyslexia. And then we have 10 people who did have dyslexia. And then finally, in the corner of the marginal cell frequencies, we have the total sample size, 250. These marginal cell totals, or marginal cell frequencies rather, are the basis of the calculation of the expected frequencies in the 2x2 two two or greater contingency table analysis, or Pearson chi-square analysis. So it's more complicated to calculate the expected cell frequencies in a 2x2 two two design because you have to calculate the marginal cell totals in order to derive the expected frequencies. So in order to get some sense of how you calculate these expected cell frequencies, I've labeled each of the cells with letters. We have A, B, C, D. Then we have A plus C. This is a marginal cell frequency. B plus D, which is another marginal cell frequency. A plus B, C plus D. And then we have A plus B plus C plus D. And that's exactly how we calculate these marginal cell frequencies. Now, how do we calculate the expected frequencies associated with A, B, and C, and D? Because that is the basis of the Pearson chi-square formula, the difference between the observed and the expected frequencies. The observed frequencies are easy enough to get. The expected cell frequencies are tougher. We have to multiply it's the product of the corresponding marginal cell frequencies divided by the total group. So we need to calculate the total group because all of the expected cell frequencies are going to be divided by this total sum, which is the sample size. But we have to multiply the corresponding marginal cell frequencies divided by the total group. So if we go back to this table here, the expected cell frequency for A, or right-handers without dyslexia, is this marginal cell frequency, 228, multiplied by this marginal cell frequency because it corresponds with no. So it's basically the intersection. And then I divide by 250. So as an example, we have well, the expected cell frequency for cell A is equal to A plus C times A plus B. So this cell here times this cell here. So again, 228 
times 240 divided by a plus b plus c plus d, which is the total sample size, 250, which is equal to 218. So let's look at the full table with observed and expected cell frequencies in the 2 by 2 contingency table analysis, which is a Pearson chi-square analysis. 228 times 240 divided by 250 equals 218.88. Now it's true that you can't have a fraction of an observation, but from the perspective of the analysis, this is what it equaled. So we expected to see 218.88 observations in this cell, but we actually saw 223. So there is a difference there, and that is going back to the formula, an observation minus the expected frequency. And we have that for each of the four key cells associated with the analysis. And here's probably one of the biggest discrepancies, is the observation of five people who are left-handed and dyslexic, but the expected cell frequency, based on multiplying 22 by 10 and dividing by 250, was equal to 0.88. So if the null hypothesis were true, and there was no association whatsoever between handedness and dyslexia, or stated alternatively, that there is no difference in the percentage of people with dyslexia who are left-handed versus right-handed, then we would observe basically one person who is left-handed and dyslexic. But in this analysis, five people were observed. And that is a pretty big difference between what was expected. So when we actually work out all the numbers in terms of summing the difference between the observed and expected cell frequencies in each of the four key cells, we get these values here. This is me working out the arithmetic. And then I end up with a chi-square value of 22.02. So this is the Pearson chi-square with all the four key cell observations and or f observed frequencies and expected. And then when I work at that out with the basic arithmetic, I get a value of 22.02, .02, which might deviate a little bit from a program that you might use to calculate the 2 by 2 Pearson chi-square because there are some rounding differences here. I only calculated to two or three decimal places. The computer will calculate to more than that. But you will get something very, very close to 22.02. .02. And you might recall that with one degree of freedom, a chi-square value of 3.84 is a bit of the magical number that demarcates a chi-square value that is sufficiently unlikely to have occurred simply by chance, even though, yes, it could have happened by chance, but it's really 5% or less of a chance that that would occur simply by chance from a repeated sampling perspective.